Shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for joining us at the study today. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. God bless you. Please do me a favor and share this broadcast. Tag somebody. Let somebody know that we are live right now and that God is about to bring something very, very profound to them today. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, I promised I was going to be taking questions from everybody that has um, have been waiting for this opportunity. Um, this is your moment. This is your time. And I'm here to answer as many questions as I can today. Uh, we'll, we are going to be having more uh, Q&A sessions uh, during the study. Um, as much uh, as much teachings as I bring at the study, I will also allow time for you guys to ask questions concerning whatever matters of the of the scriptures you want to ask, um, and the things that I've been teaching, whether on Sundays or Wednesdays uh, during regular lives. So we're just going to have a time of questions every so often at the study. Amen. 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 Uh, so today, um, the guidelines are: <laughs> please. Make sure your questions are very concise. Uh, when you're asking questions, please make sure they, um, they, they make sense and type it well <laughs> um, so that we can, you know, we don't spend time trying to figure out what you're trying to say or else we'll just skip it and then you would have to resend the question again. And then secondly, um, there are questions that I may be uh, planning to teach concerning uh, whatever topic you're asking that question about. Um, so I might, you know, um, just tell you that I, I will teach about this and teach on this because certain things um, I can't give you um, just a, maybe two minutes, four minutes answer to certain questions because they require, you know, a certain depth of knowledge for you to be able to have a good perspective and mentality concerning what you're asking. And then we have other things that I have already spoken about, whether in conferences or in other teachings, I'll probably just um, suggest to you that you go and refer back to those teachings so that you can be further enlightened on your questions and have you know, a depth of knowledge concerning what you're asking. Amen. Amen. But today I'm ready to take uh, the questions that you have and I would ask um, for next time, please send in your questions to what, uh, into the emails so that we can kind of prepare them ahead of time. Um, just today, I would allow for people to ask questions um, on live stream, um, also via Telegram. And please, I would suggest you send your questions on Telegram so we can have them. When the comments are gone, we're not able to you know, trace, trace some of your questions. So please, um, you can send um, the questions that you have. If you haven't sent them through the email, send them to uh, the telegram, the church telegram, t.me forward slash supernatural ch, and we'll be able to get your questions from there. Um, but other than that, um, we'll take the questions that came in via, via email, and then I'll go and uh, start taking questions from telegram. Um, and then we'll see how many we can answer today. If we can't finish them today, obviously there'll be another opportunity for me to ask answer those questions. Amen. Amen. And if there is a need for me to come back again next, uh, uh, the study to answer more questions, I will definitely make that announcement and we'll be able to attend to those questions. Hallelujah. The Lord. All right. So today we have um, uh, quite a few number of questions that came through the emails. So please start with the first one. So let's go. The first one is coming from Mm -hmm. He says, can you she, explain? I think it's a she. Okay, she. Mm -hmm. She says, can you explain how or why prophets were already born with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and is it just prophets or does this include other fivefold offices? All right. Um, as, far as, as far as that question is concerned, um, I think it's coming from a certain mentality. And I'm just going to touch on this because I'm going to teach about this even further. But I just want to touch on something here just to give you some direction. Um, maybe you're doing your personal study and you can probably, um, you know, this can probably help you go further into studying about it. Um, it is important that you realize that there are things that have been taught about for many years 
by the church that are actually not true. And one of such things, please hit the like button, everybody. Like everybody, like, 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 like. And one of such things is that um, you are only f filled with the Holy Spirit when um, you give your heart to Christ. Amen. And that is not true. Wow. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, it is not... Um, um, it is not necessarily uh, required that you know you have received Christ into your heart to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow! Because when you read the Word of God, you would realize. Um, I mean, usually some preachers say there's a difference um, between being filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit coming upon you. And so usually the teaching that a lot of people teach is that when you are born again, that is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when you are not born again, the Holy Spirit can just come upon you for a certain work or manifestation. However, um, it is not so. Because when God was to bring about John, the prophet, the Bible says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. The Bible also said that concerning quite a few people in the Old Testament, Samson. So the idea that you can only be filled with the Holy Spirit after you have received Christ into your heart, it is kind of um, um, an assumption that people have come up with. Um, it is not something that is scripturally um, founded because you can see before anyone could receive Jesus into their lives, there was already the advent of people being filled with the Holy Spirit, even from the mother's womb. Right. We had John as a, as a case study. We had um, 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 Samson as a case study. There are many others that were filled with the Holy Spirit from, his, from their mother's womb. So it is not necessary that you have to... Um, receive Christ for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, there are further things to say about it, but I don't want to take so much time talking about that. But I just wanted to enlighten you, pair the question, so that you have an understanding that it is possible that one can be filled with the Holy Spirit from their mother's womb, depending on what sign that the, that the Lord is giving concerning their birth. Wow. And that's another topic. You know, because some children come with a particular sign. Some children can come with a particular sign. You'll be amazed that a child could be born having a certain heavenly language. Because certain children, there are those who are born of the flesh, as we know. There are those who are born of blood. There are those who are born of the will of man. And these are, these are serious topics to look at in the, whole, in the whole of Scripture. Serious topics to go into. Those who are born of the flesh, born of the will of man, those who are born of the spirit. So these are serious things to look into. So it is just for you to understand um, that when you're reading the Bible, there are people who are filled with the Holy Spirit from their mother's womb. Amen. You could have been one of them. You never know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I hope that gives you some type of direction and clarity. So I know your question is about if it's about prophets or is it anyone that's called into the ministry. Anybody, anybody can be filled with the Holy Spirit. It just depends on what God, what sign God is trying to give concerning their birth. Amen. And that's just one aspect. Next question from Omega. She had, she, had, she had about four questions. Oh, yeah, it's a few. Okay. Question two. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the differences between when writers in Scripture say the Holy Spirit and they say the Holy Ghost? <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. Um, <laughs> all right, let me, put it, let me put it this way. In the entire Bible... Holy Spirit is translated seven times wow. in the King James Version, and I believe about seven times. And then Holy Ghost is referred to 
um, in the King James Version about 90 times. Um, however, you see the consistency of the language Holy Ghost in reference to the King James Bible yes. because of the old English language and how certain uh, um, things were being um, called in the old English language. Yes. So in the old English language, we, they referred to spirits as ghosts. Mm. Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spirits were referred to as ghosts. So um, being that uh, King James was now translating the Bible um, from Greek to um, English, they use the words that were commonly um, you know, spoken of when you're referring to a spirit. And back then, uh, in that time, it was an old English term. So ghost was preferred. Um, and usually people think that people think that when you say Holy Ghost, there is a much force that comes with saying Holy Ghost than saying Holy Spirit. Yeah. But they are all one and the same. Yes, it's just an old English reference when you say Holy Ghost, but they're all one and the same. However, um, there, are, there, are <laughs> there are a few things, and I'll just touch on one. There are a few things that can be looked at here because when a person dies, what is left of him is his ghost. Yes. Wow. Are you still here? When a person dies, what remains is his ghost. If, if a person dies, his body is deteriorated into the earth, returns back to the earth. But then what remains is his ghost. And that's where the terminology of ghost, uh, um, um, when somebody said, I've seen a ghost, that's referring to somebody who has died and now their spirit has remained. And that is referred to as a ghost. Wow. And you can see how it can actually apply because Jesus says, after he died and resurrected, I will go and I will send you the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. So basically, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the ghost of Christ. Amen. <laughs> But, you know, there are many things you can look at just to bring about um, a certain realm of understanding why, you know, that term can be uh, used interchangeably. Amen? Amen? But they are all one and the same. Thank you, Prophet. Question three from her. During the second watch video, you, uh -huh. men you mentioned that praying for people while asleep allows their will to be more subjected to your prayers. So my question is, do time zones have any effect on this? If I'm praying for someone in the night watches in my time zone, yet they are in a different time zone, will the prayer still have the same effect in the spirit, even though they may not be asleep? Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah. Great question. Great question. <laughs> so that question is... Um, implying that the, the person that you're praying about is awake, right? Yes. Um, and I said that it's important to pray for people while they are asleep. So the technicality of that is simply just to pray for them when you've, you think they are asleep. Amen. <laughs> so it's more about um, them being in a state where you can penetrate their spirit in that sense. Um, because when somebody is awake, they are more uh, conscious of their own will. And when they are asleep, they are not conscious of their will as much. And that is why you find that many people are attacked at nighttime. Yes. Because your willpower is not there as much to fight against or to, do, uh, to use your authority against what may be coming against you at that time. So your sleep time, a lot of the times, evil men, witches and wizards, they come through your sleep time most of the time because they know you are less active with your will and you are more subjected to your body. Wow. Wow, wow. So that is when 
they will choose to come and your your you are in a soulish place and your 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 body is vulnerable for attacks exactly. and things like that so um but to answer your question you would just have to determine when the person is asleep and when i was asked talking about that i think i was referring to also me praying for your children while they are asleep and why that is important yes, yeah so i hope that answers the question amen, amen. amen. so question four you and pastor obed have both spoken on the different realms of existence such as the created realm the formed realm the made realm, being in the womb, and etc. So, this question is cut off. Go to the next. Okay. Okay, I see it. So my question is, when we got saved and our old man died, did our new man already exist and what what and was just kind of waiting to be in function? Or is the new man in a completely different realm of existence since it was begotten of God? Like, which man is the one that has been always existing in all these realms? Or did both of the inner man's exist in all these realms? Wow. Deep questions. Deep questions. Ask the question again one more time. Hey. <laughs> okay. So... You and Pastor Obed mm -hmm. have both spoken on the different realms of existence, such as the created realm, the formed realm, the made realm, being in the womb, and etc. So my question is, when we got saved and our old man died, did our new man already exist and was just kind of waiting to be in function? Or is the new man in a completely different realm of existence since it was begotten of God? As in, which man is the one that has always been existing in all these realms? Or did both of the inner mans exist in all these realms? So when you, when you look at the word of God carefully, you would understand that God is not, um, he's not oblivious to what will happen in the future. Wow. He's not, um, so to speak, his, his foreknowledge guarantees his preparations, wow. yes. if I would say. So if, if God knew that Adam and Eve were going to commit a certain crime that will restrict the old man from ever coming into that experience of eternal, um, eternal relationship with God, and that old man will be done away with, you would also suppose that God would have also, you know, made plans for the new man as well. And now when we look at the word of God, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'm answering your question by the scripture. <laughs> wow, wow. He is a new creature. He is a new creature. Yes. Old things are passed away. So that which was old was passed away. Amen. And so that which was needed now became what the new man had or has and possesses. So Evidently, if you are in Christ, you have now gotten the new man. And like I always say, that Adam was not the original man. Wow. Adam was the display. Yes. You know, when you go to um, maybe a certain place, they have what you call like a prototype. Oh, wow. And your prototype is basically your display for what is actually hidden. So Adam was that prototype of the man Christ because the spirit that we have received is according to Christ, not according to Adam. Are you still there? That's why we have the first Adam and then we have the second Adam. And our spirit was made like unto the second Adam, not the first Adam. Amen. I hope that answers the question. Glory. 
Did that answer the question? Omega. Omega. <laughs> is your question answered? <laughs> if you have further questions, just send them in. Amen. 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 The next question is coming from Joshua. Okay. If a married woman has a decision to leave her husband and go with another man, <laughs> what is the consequence if she goes through with that other man committing marital, marital adultery. Mm -hmm. Can she just ask Jesus to forgive her sin and move on? If so, what is so bad about committing marital adultery for her? If she is unaware of this law and how it works, does it make her free of the consequences of it since she's sinning in total ignorance? I'm not sure I get that question. Let's start from the top again. If a married woman has a decision to leave her husband mm -hmm. and go with another man, what is the consequence if she goes through with that other man committing marital adultery? The first question I want to ask is why is she making the decision? Um, I'm, I'm, suppose, I'm supposing that you've watched um, the singles conference on, uh, uh, on um, biblical marriage and I would, I would want to refer you back to that from the beginning so you have an understanding why somebody would have to make a decision to divorce. Um, according to the word of God, I spoke concerning the three different types of uh, divorce or the, the three different types of divorce in the word of God. And uh, no, rather the three different types of adultery in the word of God and what the implications are. And so you would need to go back and really um, pay attention to the things that I spoke about. Because if we don't know the reasons why um, she's making that decision, then evidently we cannot say, you know, any other thing, you know, concerning that topic. Right. So go back and, and watch that. And at a, at a particular time, I'll be coming back and, and going further into biblical marriage and really understanding the full scope of biblical marriage. So I'd... I'd, I'd, I'd encourage you to go back and look at that again one more time amen, amen. or if you can clarify the question for us then that that would be that would be great hmm. amen go to the next question he asked so this is the only question oh from the same yeah can't she just ask jesus to forgive her sin and move on and if so what is so bad about committing marital adultery for her well forgiveness forgiveness of sins have has been granted to all of us no matter what, um, what sin you have committed, it doesn't matter whether it's um, uh, adultery, um, whatever the case may be. If you went against the scripture and, and, and you divorced, um, know that there are certain things that when certain times when you divorce, like I said during that time, uh, during the, the singles conference too, that if you divorce and while while it's you're married and it's, it's an unjust divorce, you're not allowed to be married again, you know, as a woman. And there, there were situations that, you know, warranted that. Um, that's why I'm telling you to go back. But evidently, if you have committed any sin, there is still the forgiveness of sin. So you can, you can ask for forgiveness for any sin. It doesn't matter whether it's about divorce or not. So the forgiveness of sins has been granted to you. So just receive forgiveness and move on. So, the next part is, if she is unaware of this law and how it works, does it make her free from the consequences of it since she's sinning in total ignorance? And I think you just went on. That. Yes, it's, it's important for you to just go back and really, you know, pay attention to the teaching. Amen, amen, amen. Or rephrase your question so that we can further understand what you're trying to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Next, next question. The next question is from Mary. Mm -hmm. She says, hello, I have a question for Papa Globus about a divorcee being able to remarry. Okay. So my husband left when I was almost nine months pregnant to okay. live with another woman. Okay. He proceeded to file for divorce on August... Oh, should I say the date? Don't say the date. Okay. <laughs> I have not seen my husband since... Keep going. He is still with this person and lives in adultery. Okay. I am wondering if I would be able to remarry or should I just remain alone? I am confused because some people say, yes, you can, while others say, no, you would fall into adultery yourself. Oh, okay. I am not ready to be remarried, 
but I wanted to ask Papa this question as it is currently bothering me. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> Amen. it is well. It is well. Mary, um, please, um, just you will need Singles Conference too, and it's completely free. Just ask um, to be added to um, Singles Conference too, and send a message um, on the Telegram so that you can get a clear understanding concerning remarriage and marriage because we, we, we started handling a lot of things and a lot of details concerning that. And you're also going to have the perspective of marriage according to the Word of God, what the Word of God stands for about marriage um, when it comes to uh, polygamy, monogamy, and things like that. So please um, get all of those things um, settled in your heart uh, by you know, just requesting to, to be a part of Singles Conference. Amen. That's all. Amen, amen. There's a reason why I'm not answering the question out here because I, I think that further questions concerning this will come if I start um, talking about certain things, but I've already really gone deep into some teachings already concerning it, so I'll just direct you to that. It will be best. Hallelujah. Amen. That's fine. Okay, next question. It says, Shalom, I have some questions that would, that would like to ask Prophet Globus. The first question is, when we pray in the spirit, we speak in tongues. What does it mean to worship in the spirit? As the scripture says, they will worship me in spirit and in truth. Okay, I think um, your question, you're referring to two things at the same time. What does it mean to worship in the spirit? And then you're referring to also praying in tongues and then praying in the Spirit. Now, Paul says, concerning praying in the Spirit, there are two kinds of <laughs> things you can do in the Spirit. Um, you can pray in the Spirit, and you can sing in the Spirit. Amen. All right? So he said, I will pray with the Spirit, actually, and I will pray with my understanding. So these are two different things. There, there is praying in the Spirit, Praying with the Spirit. Those are two different things. Then there is singing in the Spirit and singing with the Spirit. Wow. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, then you're referring to when Jesus spoke in John chapter 4, verse 4. Let's go to 1 Corinthians first. Let's look at what um, we're talking about there. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians is chapter number 14. Read from the verse... Uh, say 15. First Corinthians chapter number 14, verse 15. I'll take it to King James Version. Yes, please. First Corinthians 14, verse 15, King James. Uh-huh. What is it then? Uh-huh. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. And I will pray with the understanding also. So the first thing is to pray with the Spirit. Now, praying with the Spirit is not the same as praying in the Spirit. The Bible says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So my spirit now has its moment of praying. But then there is the time where my spirit is praying with the Spirit. These are two different things. Are you still there? So you can pray in the Spirit, and then you can pray with the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is simply praying in your language, in the language of the Spirit. And that's when you're talking to God um, in your language of the Spirit. And that's it. But then there are moments where the Spirit takes over you and begins to pray through you. That's praying with the Spirit. That is when the Bible says in the book of Romans that for we know not um, how we ought, uh, we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself helpeth our limitations, King James says, infirmity, and maketh intercessions. So that's now praying with the Spirit yes. because the Spirit is taking charge over our being and is praying through us. Wow. So now I'm praying with the Spirit. But then when I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm praying in my language. In my language of the Spirit, I'm talking to God in that language. But then there are moments, have you ever felt there are moments where you are just seized by the Holy Spirit and you start praying concerning matters you, you didn't even pre, predetermine to pray about? Yes. 
that's now the Holy Spirit is praying with you. Wow, 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 wow. Are you still there? Sometimes you can just wake up from your sleep and start praying. The Holy Spirit has taken charge of, over you. Sometimes your mouth is not even moving, but your spirit is praying. The Holy Spirit is now praying through you. And sometimes when you wake up, sometimes in, in, you know, in the morning, and you just feel a certain kind of moodiness, it's not because you're mad or sad, somebody said something to you, you know, or somebody did anything to you, no. You just woke up and you just felt burdened right. in your heart, heavy in your heart. Sometimes your spirit is praying and it's communicating certain things and it's affecting your state. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You're not mad. Nothing is wrong with you. You're not angry at anybody. But you are in, a, in such um, uh, a frequency in the spirit that your spirit is communicating with God, but your mouth is not saying anything. Yes. But it's showing in your visage that something is happening within you. There's a burden about something within you. Your spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying through you. That's praying with the Spirit. Hallelujah. But now your question is, um, is it the same as uh, John chapter number 4? John chapter number 4. So this is John chapter number four. Can we find the scripture that says um, uh, praying in spirit and in truth? To worship the Father in spirit and in truth, rather. I believe it's John four, right? Okay. Those that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this is going to be John chapter 4, verse 23. Okay. But the hour cometh, ah. and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Uh -huh. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, there is now the worship. So we read in, um, okay, finish First Corinthians, the chapter number 14. From the verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 15. Uh-huh. What is it then? Uh-huh. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray. And I will pray with the understanding also. So I'll pray with the Spirit, and then I will pray with my understanding. Mm. So I will pray with the Spirit, then I will pray with my understanding, meaning I'll pray in the language that I know. Yeah, yeah or with the language that I know. Then there is the, the language of the Spirit that is used while singing. That's what he's about to say next. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with, with my understanding. understanding also. So there is the language of the Spirit that is used in singing, just making melody in the language of the Spirit or with the language of the Spirit, then there is singing with your understanding, which is words you actually know wow, wow. and can understand, which is English, French, whatever it is. But then that is not the same as uh, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. What the Bible is referring to is hearty worship. When you are worshiping the Father, it is not about where you are. Because if you read the context, the, they were speaking concerning um, what the Samaritans believe concerning where to worship and what the Jews believe concerning where to worship. Yes. And according to the Samaritans, they believed that you went to the mountains and that's where you can really connect to God. And the Jews believe that you go to the temple. Then Jesus interrupted that, that whole thing. He says, now the hour is coming. That it's not about where you go, yes. but wherever you are, you can connect. Hallelujah. In spirit and in truth. Amen. In spirit and in truth. You can connect to God from anywhere from your spirit. Anywhere. Your spirit is now the residency of God. Amen. So you don't need to be at a mountain to worship. You don't need to be inside of a temple to worship. You can connect to God truthfully from your heart. You are hearty towards God in worship. Amen. 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 That's the context of the scripture. I hope that answers your question. 
Hello. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I read in John still on question. You can read John. Read John so that they can get it. Yes, so John chapter 4, verse 23. Uh-huh. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Uh-huh. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So hearty worship, giving God your all in worship. You know, I mean, what does, what does it mean to you when you're worshiping? You know, and sometimes we sing songs and we're not connected to the songs. We don't know, we don't, we don't have a, a connection to it, to what it means. It has no meaning to us. Yes. And so at that point, you're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh. So when you worship God, you have to worship him in spirit. That means it must make meaning. It must have meaning to right, you. Right, right. You must feel what you're saying to God. Whether you are singing to him or speaking to him, yes. it must come from a, a, a sense of yeah. uh, truth. And then you have that real uh, connection to what you're saying. Because yes, many times we're just blabbing words we already know or we hear. Like, you know, when I was growing up, um, typically when you're worshiping God, Father, you are the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, ancient of this. And you're just repeating things somebody said, but you have no connection as to what it means to you. Right, right. That's not in spirit. Wow. You're just doing things based on your programming of what you have heard for a long time. Wow. So when you want to worship God, you worship God in spirit. What the, how, when you think about God, what is, what is he to you? What does he mean to you? Yes. That's in spirit. Wow, wow. Revelation. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. I need to write that one down. Okay. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Okay, so next question. Mm -hmm. She says, what prayers do we say or declare when seeing cobwebs around or by the house fence? Cobwebs by around or by the house fence. Um, seeing them, I mean, naturally, there's the there is there is the um, the natural aspect of cobwebs around the house, um, just because of spiders and things like that. But then there is the spiritual phenomenon of cobwebs. That has to do with, you know, um, you walking into a certain web um, and in a strange, at a strange time of the day or maybe in an area where you would normally not presume that there should be cobwebs there. So cobwebs themselves have their natural phenomenon and I want you to understand that. Um, and that's just produced by spider. So we call it spider webs. So that's just a natural phenomenon. However, there is the spiritual phenomenon where if you're just walking and you realize that you walked into a web and you know, some stuff attaching to your face or your body and things like that, and there is no, there's no way that in that area that should happen, yes. that's when you begin to now take that matter seriously. Wow. But to just see cobwebs around the house, it may be just because you know, there are spider webs around. Yes. Um, but if, if you um, find yourself getting into um, cobweb manipulation and things like that. These are things I'm going to be teaching um, pretty soon at our watch nights, um, very soon. Um, however, if you find that happening, you just cancel whatever is there. I'll teach you for that uh, directions to do at watch night. So, but for now, seeing cobwebs around the house is a normal phenomenon. All right, if you see somewhere, you see it attached here by, by the corner of your house, it's just because maybe there's dirt there and the spiders are just... You have spider webs around. <laughs> that's, just, that's just what it is. <laughs> Amen. Glory. So question three. Is there a proper or advised way to read our Bible? Is it chapter to chapter or is there a particular order to follow? I think I've answered this question in one of our videos. Um, I'm not sure which one, but I think there's a teaching online on YouTube. 
and I gave steps on what to do um, in reading the Bible. So I think you should research. Just go through the YouTube page. Um, the, the, I'm, I'm not sure what it's called. But just go through the YouTube channel, and then you, you, probably, you probably run into it. But I've done um, a teaching concerning that. Uh, if you don't find it, please ask the question again, and then I'll come back and do maybe a teaching. If, if I haven't thought about it, I think I have. I think I have, because I remember speaking concerning this. But if I haven't, I'll come back again and talk to you about it. But it's, first of all, it's just important that you make a practice of reading the scriptures, because for you to come into understanding and revelation, you must know what's in there. So uh, make a practice of reading the scriptures. Reading the scriptures has its own spiritual work. So um, you don't have to start immediately, start studying in-depth situations and things about the Bible. You know, first you need the knowledge of the scriptures um, to be founded in you um, so that when you're actually now getting to understand what the scriptures has to say, say, then if you want to go into further study, that's another thing. However, it's just important to just make a practice of reading the scriptures consistently so that you know what's in there. Amen. Question four. Is it correct to assume that as a believer, it's okay to listen to, I, mean, I think she means secular music, so long as they are, they are clean versions, such as R&B, country, jazz, um, etc., for times when you're working out or exercising, etc.? <laughs> I know this one. You want to tell them? <laughs> Since, you know. well you, Since you know. Since you know. Glory to God. Glory. I remember sharing some things with, um, with them the other time um, while they were in the studio. Um, read, this, read the question one more time. Yes, sir. Is it correct to assume that as a believer... It's okay to listen to secular music so long as there are clean versions, such okay. as R&B, country, and jazz, okay. for times when you're working out, and et cetera. Um, what we refer to as secular music has varied um, perceptions concerning it. When you say secular, usually people are talking about music that doesn't have God in it, or the God mentioned, rather, uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, or phrases in the Bible <laughs> mentioned in it. So that's what people are referring to as secular. Yes. However, I don't, I don't like to go and, you know, define things that way because my understanding of the things of God is that God is the creator of all things. Mm and that God made all things. Yes. And anything can be sung about and anything can be said about in a song. Yes. Doesn't necessarily make it ungodly. Yes, yes. Are you still there? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, trust me, there are many songs that people sing that are scripturally very wrong. <laughs> Yet it has the name of God in it. It has Jesus in it. It has uh, um, so many different things in, in it. You know, like, you know, when I hear... Um, Christians singing songs that we are not worthy to me. Yeah. That's not scriptural because according to the word of God, he has made us meet. Hey. You know, he has qualified us Glory. in him. Yes, yes. So we can't be singing songs like we are not worthy, you know. Um, you know, so many different types of songs. I'm trying to remember a few that I, you know, I usually talk about. Um, there is one that always gets, gets on my nerves. <laughs> If I remember, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. But um, the aspect of singing deals with issues of life, deals with um, people's experiences, um, whatever it is that inspired them to write those songs, um, just um, has to deal with what people have gone through in their lives. And it doesn't necessarily make it evil or wrong to sing those songs because the name of God is not mentioned. To me, that's just being uh, myopic in your thinking. Right. Um, you have to give God more credit than you are giving him. You know, the things that people go through in life and what, you know, circular people or worldly people go through in life involves God, even though they don't acknowledge him. Wow. Talk about it. 
So all those things are basically coming from people who um, they've become too, I don't want to put it in a way that can be critical of them because I like the spirituality of, you know, um, if you wanted to, you know, just be someone that, you know, it's just gear, you, you, all you love is, you know, Christian music or music that have, you know, things that, has, you know, talks about God that edifies your spirit and things like that. But there are also music for the soul. Yes, There's yes. music for the mind. Mm. There's music for the body. Jesus. Hello. Oh, <laughs> wow. um, and you can't be so s spiritual that you are, you have no earthly use <laughs> or Ooh. earthly good. That's crazy. You see, um, for example... Um, it will be, <laughs> it will be rather, <laughs> rather nonsensical mm. if you were to, to if, if I were to ask you on your wedding day to sing to your wife <laughs> and you come up with Holy Spirit, <laughs> I adore you. No, no, no. Like <laughs> <laughs> I watched a video one time. <laughs> they asked this guy to sing to his wife. You know, he started singing a churchy song, and I was like, hey. Oh you see, it is, it's a kind of myopic mindset that people have. Yeah, yeah. And they think that when, when you sing a song that doesn't have God in it or Jesus mentioned or some scriptural phrase mentioned in that song, it automatically makes that song of the devil. That's just being myopic. Mm. You, you really don't, you're, you're not clear. You're limiting the expanse of who God is. Right. God interferes in the lives of people around the world, whether they believe in him or not, whether they acknowledge him or not. Wow, the wow. situations they are dealing with in their lives also involves God. Hallelujah. That's good. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. people can write about their experiences. People can talk about their experiences. It's like saying that if I'm reading a book that doesn't have the name of God in it, I shouldn't read the book. Just, then don't go to school. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. So, you see, so it's, it's just a myopic way of reasoning. Mm. So um, you are allowed to, um, to listen to such circular songs. Uh, um, like you said, um, provided that they are clean, they don't, um, they don't go against um, the consistency of what is positive, what can build you, what yes. can edify you. Yes. Um, what can improve your thinking, your mind, what can improve your relationships. Um, so those are just the guidelines of what you listen to because songs are typically words and words affect your spirit and your mind and your body. So you have to watch what kind of message comes through songs into you. Amen. So Amen. That's all there is to it. Glory, glory. You're setting us free. And I think the song, the song you don't like is I Surrender. <laughs> that's one, that's one of them. It's just, it's just because if you're born again, you're not you're not supposed to be surrendering again. Yes, you you yes. should have surrendered. <laughs> you see, you, you should have surrendered. It's only a sinner that should be singing that song, I surrender. Hey, wow. But that's another topic. Amen. Amen. This is all for the email questions probably. All right. No problem. Okay, now we can take questions from the telegram. Hallelujah. I hope this is blessing you as you're watching. Oh, too much. Oh. Okay, so this is coming from Aaron. Why do you need to pray for some things to happen in your life, but some things you do not have to pray for them? Because prayer is not the answer for everything. Full Come stop. Come on. And I've taught that many times. Pray like that. So this is coming from Janine. How can I explain to my mom, who is a Jehovah's Witness, that Holy Spirit is non only is not only spirit? but a person, and it's three in one. Um, <laughs> so we're dealing with doctrines and, you know, um, dogmats from different sects of belief. Um, I don't think it's how you can explain. It's whether or not she's open to the truth yeah. 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 of the word of God. Because if it's just about... Um, you know, communicating your knowledge of the scriptures and it's your mom that we're talking about, <laughs> I don't think um, you'll be as successful as you think you, you, you imagine you may be. Um, and she has to come to her own uh, time of awakening. You know, I was speaking with a few people the other time concerning people have their different, there's what is known as their awakenings. So there are people um, who would believe certain things 
uh, much quicker. There are others who believe later on because everybody has their, their awakenings they have to come into. So concerning any subject of ma matter that we're dealing with, there are different awakenings for different people. So I may have come into the awakenings, so to speak, as I teach concerning things with astrology and things like that, but some people are not at that moment yet. So no matter what you try to say to them, it is not the moment of the awakening to that truth. So if you try to force them into it, eh, they, will keep t they will keep pushing back. So you, all you have to do is pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal to them just as he revealed to you the truth concerning that scripture. And when you're dealing with your mom, you have to be careful because that's an elder. Yes. Um, you, don't want to, you don't want to come off right, as right. Um, authoritative and right. too corrective in a sense. Mm. Um, if it's a Bible study, you can come up with your own strong um, points from the scriptures um, because it's only the scriptures we are going to listen to. Uh, we're not trying to give our own suggestions and opinions concerning what we think concerning this. We are saying what the Word of God has to say about the Holy Spirit. If he's a person, he's a person. If he's uh, 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 the, the third uh, person of the triune being known as God, um, it's, it's all there and it's clear in the Scriptures. So if you can bring and go into your study and bring enough evidences concerning your point and just share with her. If she receives it, fine. If she doesn't receive it, just keep praying and keep it moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, the, Lord. Praise the Lord. This is coming from Nicholas. Okay. I noticed, Prophet, that you use certain scents and you talked about how colognes and aromas um, <laughs> can attract angels and how also um, your man of God, which is... Um, our pastor Obed also does buys tons of cologne. So you are, you are revealing private things I'm sharing with you. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> so uh -huh. his question is, can certain aromas and scents indeed attract favor, grace, or even finances? Yes. And, and but we are not says, at that stage to teach on those things yet. Okay. Yeah, but go ahead. And he says, I understand angels like certain aromas and even God Absolutely. likes certain smells because the word of God says in Leviticus 6 verse 15, and one shall take from it a handful of fine flour of the cereal offering in its oil and all the frankincense which is on the cereal offering and burn this as its memorial portion on the altar, a pleasing odor to the Lord. Yes. So yes, yes. Yes, yes. To your question. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. Um, this is coming from Nelson. Okay. If God allows your spirit to be out of your body or undergo astral projection, what should we do in that realm? Should we speak words there, or and how do we operate there? That's a that's an entire teaching on its own. Like we can talk about ast ast <laughs> astral proje projections, you know, in in <laughs> in a question format. It's it's yeah, yeah. it's beyond. We, we can't answer that question in one setting um, because as I like to teach um, personally, I, ha I have to build you to a certain point um, because I have to also talk to you about um, the operations in the dark world uh, as opposed to the operations in the light world. Yes, and so those things have to be understood before we even open up the topic of astral projection and things like that. So we, we, can't, we can't go into that. But very soon, I'll be talking about astral projections. Very soon. Hallelujah. So just stay connected to the channel. Amen. Very Amen. soon. This is coming from Linda. Thank you, Papa, for the opportunity. What do stars represent in a dream? And if I had a dream of millions of stars in the sky along with shooting stars, and some of, and some of those stars formed in constellations of different creatures, what does it mean? It's just showing you the identity of stars. So when you see stars, it's, it's giving you different variations of the identity. So that means even animals have their stars. Oh, wow. So it's just giving you insight concerning what stars represent or what they also represent. Deep. This is coming from Brandy. Come on with the questions. I'm, I'm looking for some deep, deep stuff. <laughs> is there ever a time when it is okay to distance yourself from your immediate family members being lied on and gossiped on by immediate family, such as being lied on and gossiped? I value family, but is it okay to love them from afar? 
so I would, I would answer your question in two ways. Um, family is, is, um, is a blessing yes. that God has given each and every one of us. And that is an institution that actually should guarantee um, a certain life path that will fulfill the demands of your assignment and what you were called to do here on earth. And there is a certain uh, blessing that comes with having family with you at certain stages of your life. However, there are moments in time when family actually goes in opposition to that which could make your life fruitful and benefit you. Um, that does not make them your enemy, however. It's, it just doesn't put them at the place where um, you can have such um, a bond with them and a fellowship with them because fellowship is critical to your destiny. Who you hang around and who you deal with often will actually determine the projection of and the progress that you make in life. Wow. So there are moments where you as a person, as a grown-up person, because um, I, I do not expect kids to be making these decisions, <laughs> but you as a grown-up person who have come of age can decide to limit your dealings and your, the time, amount of time you spend fellowshipping with family for the sake of preserving your, your, your destiny and the assignment of God upon your life for the season. Amen. Um, that doesn't mean that you, you make them an enemy and you become, so to speak, bitter about them and bitter about you know, what they did to you or what they're doing to you. Yes. Just excuse yourself and don't put yourself in, um, so to speak, uh, a comfortable situation where they always have easy access to you, to your life, and yes. influencing you consistently. Yes. Um, that may affect how you're going and how you're leading your life, and it may actually uh, hinder your progress. Um, and there are things to identify. There are things to note. Um, when you are not being, um, so to speak, if you're not being... I don't want to use the word celebrated because I think there's a difference between um, being celebrated and also there's a need where you are, there's a need for you to be in places where you can also be corrected. Yes, and sometimes some people take that as not being celebrated. Right. And so you have to be able to judge the two. Yes. Um, being corrected and um, not being celebrated, it's not the same thing. Yes, so you have to have the... the the decency, the decency of mind and um, a certain mature awareness when somebody is correcting you and when they are not celebrating you. So sometimes family will put you through certain things so that you can understand maybe there's more you can do, more you can achieve. Um, for example, if you are living with family, with your parents, and they are talking to you about doing certain things and you probably don't want to do those things, um, it doesn't mean that they are against you, yeah. right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that they are fighting you. It doesn't mean that they don't believe in you. They just don't see certain pathway of the choices you are making. So you have to be able to know the difference, exactly. all right? But then there are times where um, we come from families that are very vengeful and they go about doing ridiculous things and, and, and say ridiculous things, insults, uh, um, talk down on you, depreciate your value before others, you know, things like that. When you have a dream, they are the ones fighting it, they are the ones, you know, taking from you and they are never being the ones to, uh, to, to, to push you to where you need to be in life. And so those things, how you have to carefully look at them. Um, and so I'd advise that you have a counselor and a mentor that mentors you through those stages in life so you can be able to have appropriate understanding concerning what is happening within that family setting. Amen. All right? Wow. Not just to just make decisions to break relationships or and things like that. You have to know um, whether what you're doing is actually correct or what they're doing is correct before you begin to, 
take any kind of serious decisions against your family. Amen. <laughs> so I hope that that's clear. Yes, that is wisdom. So this is coming from Jeremy. What is it when you're in the spirit cleaning things and throwing things away? I don't, I don't want to answer such questions because I will get some. I, I want serious questions about certain things because if I start, what is it about this, what is it about this, then I'll start asking you questions and I'm not sure if you're going to have answers for them. Hmm. Because it can mean, a, you know, and it's the same thing I, I, I notice when people ask about dreams. What does it mean when I see this in my dream? What does this mean when I see that in my dream? It could mean so many different things depending on your situation in, in that period of time depending on what's going on in your life. So that's why you need to learn the, the rules of interpretations, the principles of interpretations, so you, you know how to go about asking skillful questions in interpreting a dream that you have. Um, you have to know what to cite in your dream, um, um, where you wear, things like that. So there are many things, and I've taught this in our dream course one and course two, so those are things that are available for you to actually get into so that you can um, learn how to interpret dreams, um, know the, the mechanics of interpretations, the mechanics of dreams and things like that. Um, I hate just coming and telling you, oh, when you see this, this means this, because it may mean something totally different in another time in your life. Yes. Yes. You know, somebody can say, oh, when you see a snake, what does it mean? Right. Immediately you will think it's evil. Right. But in another dream, in another context of another dream, it could actually mean wisdom. So if I just tell you a snake means the devil is after you, imagine what I'm doing to you for the rest of your life. Oh my God. Your interpretations will be wrong. So, true. so that's why we need the principles of interpretations. Mm. Amen. Principles of interpretation. If somebody gives you an interpretation to your dream, ask them how did they come about that interpretation. Yes, if they don't give you solid principles of interpretation, then you may be getting the wrong interpretation. Thanks, Amen. Mm. So these things are very important. Glory. I would, I would skip all the dream questions today. <laughs> because I'm trying to take really serious questions concerning people's understanding of the scriptures, things that I have taught, and things like that. I don't, I don't want to go into the dream stuff. It would just, it would just take us you know, into some other... I, I've tried this before. That's why I don't like interpreting people's dream on live stream. So this one is coming from Rashabar. Yes, please. Prophet Globus, does fasting help with spiritual patterns? Does fasting help your spiritual patterns? What do you mean by spiritual patterns? Please rephrase your question. Give us more understanding of what you're trying to ask. Hit the like button and share, guys. Hit that like button and share, 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 share. How do you know your soul stay? What question? Can you say the question on the mic? Karabashando koza hai. Okay, well, so... From Shukar Shukarani. Okay. How do I find out my soul's day concerning HDA direction? Very simple. Your soul's day is the day of the week you were born. And I think I've mentioned this quite a, quite, um, a number of times. Um, all you need to do is just punch your date of birth on Google and ask Google what day of the week that was. And that would be your soul's day. Amen. So it could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. Dr. Sean, can godly angels appear in black robes? Yeah. Glory. <laughs> <laughs> you see, th this is this is the <laughs> this is why I'm telling you. If I because people would ask, uh, what does it mean when you see this color? <laughs> if I tell you black means demon, yeah. I've destroyed your whole life with interpretations. When it comes to the principles of interpretations, like you you can't. Things are not just black and white, yes, you know, in the, in the spirit, you know, because there is the essentials of, um, of the spiritual realm 
that you must understand. If, if an angel appears to you and is wearing a black suit, black tie, black everything, you think it's a demon. But it's not. <laughs> Glory. Coming from I remember one of the angels that appeared to me um, was wearing a gray suit with a black shirt and uh, I believe a black tie as well. Wow. It was a gray suit. Black guy. Black guy. Black. Hey. Bald. No hair. <laughs> so imagine. Wow, sharp. <laughs> imagine. But it was a fierce looking being. Wow. Fierce looking being. You know, when people say, um, when an angel appears to you, you feel so at peace. You don't understand. <laughs> Listen, there are beings of light when they appear to you, you run. Just how they look. Imagine a being of light appears to you with 10 eyes right here. You would think it's the devil. But they are such creatures of God. <laughs> God has made myriads of creatures. And they may look funny to you because you are not used to seeing such kind of, you know, beings. You're only used to seeing humans with two eyes. I mean, the most you have ever seen is a human with maybe six fingers and six toes. <laughs> Imagine you meet a being with ten fingers. You'd be like, what is this? It's still, it's still, it could still be of light. And that's why I had to teach you concerning how to identify spirits. Um, um, how to know... Um, I'm forgetting that teaching. But I've taught you about how to identify spirits. Um, and then huh, how to test spirits. And then I've also taught you about... Um, no, casualties. Yes, yeah, so casualties will also help you understand how to identify different beings and things like that. And then we've talked about the ontology of spirit guides. So go into those teachings and you will be able to have greater understanding and greater light concerning that. Amen. Amen. Coming from Relentless for Christ. Good evening, Prophet Globus. Good evening. I would like to know whether Lucifer fell before the formation of Adam and Eve. Thank you. Yes, that's what the Word of God teaches. From Zula, how do we discern the voices in our... The head? formation, his physical formation. Is that what you're talking about? Like from Genesis, referring to Genesis? Yes. Okay, all right. From Zula, how do we discern the voices in our heads? How do we discern the voices in our heads? Um, I think first you must be knowledgeable of the scriptures. Um, to discern any voice, you must know... Um, you must have a certain um, knowledge about God. Um, and so knowing the scriptures is actually first and foremost uh, what helps you to be able to do that. But then there is a way the voice of God comes to you in your head. Um, there is the voice of God that comes to you from behind. There's a voice of God that comes to you from your side. And these are things that I, I teach in Holy Ghost Academy concerning how to sense and we're getting into some deeper stuff. Um, and then the Bible says you shall hear a voice behind you. So there's that sense of the voice of God coming from behind you. Um, but then how do you know in your mind what voice to listen to? Um, there's the voice of your spirit. There's the voice. There are many voices. And we're going to go into decrypting voices very soon. Uh, I know we talked about de decrypting uh, appearances and decrypting um, um, another thing. I forgot what it was. But we're going to go into decrypting voices very soon. Um, but yes, um, the voice of your mind can come from your spirit. Um, the voice of God can also come from your spirit. So you have to know how to differentiate which one it is. So um, it's, these, are, these are things that are topics I deal with at Holy Ghost Academy. Um, so I, I, can't, I can't speak much about it. <laughs> so I would encourage you to be a part of Holy Ghost Academy so my, my students don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm sharing their, their, their lessons out here. That's why we have such classes, so that you can upgrade your spiritual perception and your senses and things like that. It's very important. Amen. Glory. So we have one coming from Nelson. 
Prophet, sometimes while praying, I suddenly feel like shouting, which can be too loud, but I try to be soft. What does that mean, and what is happening in the spirit? You suddenly feel like shouting. Yes. Shouting is an activity of the spirit as well. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible talks about how God would recommend a certain time for them to shout. Um, the Bible says that um, those who dwell in Zion have come with shouts of glory. So shouting is a part of um, the spiritual work that we do. So there are moments where um, when something needs to be done in the spirit, you have to give it a shout. Uh, if a spiritual work um, that you're trying to, to, uh, to, to manifest uh, in the spirit is said with a lower octave or a lower tone, a lower volume, you may not get as much results. So there are moments where you will need a shout yes. to get that result in the spirit. So that's why those things happen. Amen. From Laura, Prophet, I keep seeing rainbows. What could this mean? It could mean a lot of things. <laughs> but first thing, interpret rainbows from the light of scripture. Yes. You know, the first place of interpretation is always from scripture. You can always take everything back and reference it to scripture so that it can mean something to you. And I'll give you something, just general speaking. When God speaks to you, he speaks to you based on your realm of knowledge, your realm of understanding, your realm of no knowing. So if God is giving you a dream or a vision about something about rainbow, that vision that he's giving you is going to come from your realm of understanding about rainbow. So you have to use what you know concerning the rainbow to interpret what God is saying to you. Wow. Wow. If you ask me, I may come with my own knowledge. That's why I teach people how to interpret for themselves so that they can use their realm of knowledge to do it. Yeah. And it's the same even with dreams. That's why you ask skillful questions when you're interpreting somebody's dream. You know, if, for example, um, I always give this example because it happened uh, while we were in a Holy Ghost Academy class. I was teaching about interpretations, and I asked uh, some of the students to interpret dreams. And uh, a particular lady spoke concerning how that there was a dream where she felt um, something about her navel, um, and then something about uh, the navel. She just gave something about the navel, right? And had to do with a child or things like that. And then in that moment, um, I asked one of my, my sons to interpret the dream. And he was spot on. And I showed him why he was spot on. Because he was not interpreting about the navel concerning his navel, his understanding of the navel. Now he has to think what navel could mean to her. Yes, yes, yes. Not what it means to you. When you're interpreting people's, interpreting somebody's dream, it's not about what it means to you. Because you're not the one having the dream. God is not speaking to you. He's speaking to them. You're just helping them come to that understanding. These are things I've taught at, uh, at, um, at Holy Ghost Academy. It's a lot of teachings that I've done concerning dream, dream interpretation. So when, when you are interpreting somebody's dream, you can't interpret, in, interpret their dream based on your understanding. You have to see what is happening in their lives, what they are going through in that moment for you to be able to break it down for them to say, okay, this is what it means, this is what it means, this is what God is saying. And so you have to ask certain skillful questions. There are questions you should ask. I thought about those things, those kind of questions you should ask at, at, um, when somebody's telling you about their dreams. So those things, all, all these things are very important. I imagine um, now he was interpreting the lady's dream based on what she, he felt could, that never could mean to her. And every woman knows that when you are giving birth to a child, um, your navel is, is caught, the umbilical cord is caught, and that's how you get the navel. And so when he interpreted the dream, he spoke concerning um, 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 what the dream meant about certain things about her, child, her getting a child, she's believing God for a child, and they've been trying, and things like accurate, and that God was you know, saying this and this and this and this, and she received it. And that's another thing. If you interpret somebody's dream and they don't receive it, please don't be mad because it has, they have to be able to receive it. And if they don't receive it because they don't like the interpretation is another thing I talked about. Because you read the Bible in the, in the book of Genesis 
when, <laughs> when Joseph was interpreting the dream of the two prisoners, one he gave a good interpretation, the other one gave his dream expecting the, something good to also come out from it, but it was a bad interpretation or it's a bad omen, you know, and so he felt maybe the dream was, you know, some people can feel like the dream is not interpreted right because it was, it's a bad omen. So those things, I talked about those mechanics so that you can be able to know how to identify when a dream is bad, when a dream is good. I, talk, I talked about all of that. So in your interpretation, when you hear a dream from somebody, you know what can be off course and what can be on course. So that's what is helping you, guiding you through the interpretations. So if you just give somebody an interpretation of, of their dream and it's based on what you know and not what is happening in their lives and the current situation of their lives, you may miss the interpretation. So please ask this question one more time so I make sure I've actually landed. Okay, so I'm sorry, I think this was this one was how do we discern the voices in our head? No, the one the other one was about dreams. I already finished with that one. Was it about that? Okay, I think I landed it. <laughs> okay. So the next question is going to come from... Oh, no, I'm sorry, Prophet. So it was actually from Laura when she, when she asked... I thought so. Have uh -huh. you seen rainbow? Yeah. So please, rainbow can mean a lot depending on the situation and your current events. So use what you have going on in your life at this moment, your knowledge of the rainbow what it means to the situation, because now you can tell also some people are coming up with their own rainbow <laughs> mentality. So I don't know what, what is going on in your life at this point, but um, you can use that to be able to judge for yourself what that means based on the content of your dream also, what was happening in the dream. That helps you understand what the rainbow could represent within that context. Next question is from RJ. Okay. He says, Prophet, I don't have any issues with my ears, but every day I have ringing, and sometimes it's high pitched and low. Is, does this have anything to do with my spiritual man? Yes, it does. Um, the ringing in your ears are also angelic signals that have been given to you, and sometimes it could just mean that you need to exercise yourself spiritually in hearing uh, the voice of God from that ear. Sometimes it's a prophetic. Um, um, prophetic gifting um, that is that needs to be activated for you to hear God. You know, sometimes you will hear a prophet say, "Oh, I heard, I heard, I'm hearing the Lord speaking to my right ear, or I'm hearing the Lord speaking to my left ear." Some people's one of the ears can be sharper than the other. Just as in the natural, one of your ears can hear better than the other. It's so also in the spirit realm. That's why you need. Uh, uh, things that can activate your hearing so that you can hear clearly on both ears or one ear or whatever the case may be. You know, and I've taught those things at Holy Ghost Academy, activating your sense of hearing and things like that. So, so many things we've talked about at Holy Ghost Academy, you need to be a part of it. Or go back and, you know, um, request for those teachings that we've done already on spiritual senses, teachings concerning the dream course one and two, um, uh, so many different things we've talked about. Hallelujah. So from Aaron, how does Satan destroy your destiny through fornication, masturbation, and sexual sin and things like that? That's a very deep question. Um, and it requires a lot, <laughs> a lot of breaking down. And sexual sin, um, sexual sin is, Usually, the way it's being taught about in church sometimes can bring about further bondage yeah. in the lives of people. Um, because there's a way you must address um, sin when you're speaking to a believer. Yeah. When you're speaking to a believer, um, there's a way you must address sin because the Bible says sin shall no longer have dominion over you because you're not under the law but under grace. And all these things must be understood. 
Um, but to overcome se sexual sin, um, you need to also understand the stage you are in in your walk with God. I, I spoke of this um, a while ago um, when I was dealing with spiritual awareness. You might need to go back and watch that teaching. Understanding where you are at in your walk with God determines your struggle in your walk with God. Wow. So there are those the Bible calls babes. Right. Then there are those who the Bible calls the youth. Yes. And when it comes to the youth, your problem is lost. Yes. <laughs> your biggest fight will be with loss. Right. And there is what you should know and be aware of as your challenge your challenge, then there is what is uh, the challenge of those who are elderly in the faith. Um, and so these challenges are things where God gives you a heads up concerning how you should prepare yourself. Now, if you know that your problem is lost, that means that you need to organize your life in a certain way where the areas and the places you go and the things you engage with, you know, can, you can actually limit the, the opportunities for the devil to bring that to you. Now, all sin can destroy a person's destiny. Wow. All sin. Yes, there is not a particular sin that does not have an effect on your life and destiny. That is why God doesn't want you to walk in sin. All right. So whether it's uh, uh, sexual sin, uh, any kind of sin, all of them has their have their their implications and what they can, you know, limit as to your design for destiny. So I wouldn't make you become more serious about um, sexual sin and avoid lying because that. <laughs> <laughs> that can also have a serious effect on your destiny. Um, when you come to a, a spiritual understanding of what sin is and what each sin actually produces. I spoke concerning lying um, a few Sundays ago, and that you can only see from just lying alone what the implications are. So we are there to walk according to the standard of God and I walk according to the ways of God. Um, and when it comes to sexual sin, there's a lot to say about um, but again, you have to understand which one is a sexual sin. Because when I say lost, people immediately will think that I'm dealing with uh, 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 sex, sex as a matter of, as a point in case. But if I say lost, I could just be referring to a desire. So there is a lot that needs to be understood. So I need, I need to deal with the issue of lost. Before, if you go into masturbation, then it's another subject. It's all on its own. So, but those are things that I'm, I'm planning to teach very soon. The next singles conference we're going to go into, singles conference is going to be about uh, sex edition. But now I'm dealing with marriage and things like that. But all these things are things that must be well understood. Um, like I said, answers are not black and white. You have to understand their context, you know, and how they should be approached when you're answering certain questions. Amen. Amen. But just have, have in mind that... Um, Satan uses all sins. It's not just sexual sin that he uses. He uses all sins to find a way to destroy a person's destiny. Anything that, any sin that becomes your weakness um, can be used against you. So you have to know how to position yourself. When the spirit is what? When, when the, when the spirit is communicating with God and it's affecting you. What do you mean it's affecting you? Um, so, referring back to what you said earlier. Yeah. Pertaining to how um, you're not mad at anybody, but something in your face is showing that. Something like you're burdened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a signal from the Spirit for you to begin now to pray with your spirit. So the Holy Spirit is trying to engage you, but usually people just go throughout the day just looking in that way. 
instead of joining the Spirit in that moment. Yeah. Um, my next question, I have three. Go ahead. One. It's so, Q&A. <laughs> this is um, referring to Genesis chapter 15. Okay. Pass through what? The animal pieces when God was making a covenant with Abraham. <laughs> Why was it a flaming sword? Flaming torch. Torch? I have no idea. <laughs> Some things are just God's, God will recommend mm. that things to be done a certain way. I don't have the answer to that question. And so I pray you teach me one day. Ask God. <laughs> I'm going to teach about birds of prey. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> and was this act foretelling of the sacrifice of Jesus in the New Testament? It could be. I mean, uh, you have to understand that the, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Mm -hmm. So everything you see in the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Thank you, Father. Absolutely. All right, be snappy. I think people are waiting for the answer. So. <laughs> what does it mean when in a dream you, you bow or kneel before a man of God and assist him in putting on his shoe? I'm not going to refer to those things today. Um, again, I don't want to go back to talk about dreams and stuff like that. Um, that's one of the things that I like to stay away from. <laughs> just because I believe that there's, there's so many mistakes that can be made. Um, in just telling you what something means without really understanding the context of what you're dealing with and the dream. Amen. So, Christine Normally when people are around me, I can be able to ask them questions and then be able, like for you guys that are always around me, you tell me about your dream all the time and I'm able to ask questions and then give you a clear understanding of what I think. But if we go into that now, it's going to just take us into so much stuff. It's going to take too much time. And usually people would um, come even via counseling for me to be able to, to help them with certain dreams and stuff like that. But again, it is not my desire to interpret dreams. It's my desire to raise people, to, to teach them how to interpret their dreams. That's more important to me than uh, me being here and showing that I can interpret dreams. Nah. I have been told that I have the spirit of Joseph. What does that really mean? Ask the person who told you. Amen. I have no idea. <laughs> and it's, it's not because I, if, if I tell you, if, it's just like if somebody tells you, um, if somebody comes and tells you uh, about, because I get this all the time. Somebody will come to me and say, oh, this prophet prophesied this about me and stuff like that. Um, how can I confirm it? I can't confirm it because I didn't tell you that. So it's that prophet that can only confirm it to you and tell you what exactly that is. Now, if, if you are a son and a daughter to me and you're under my uh, tutelage and you're under my covering, then I can, because of what I know about you and in raising you, I can tell you some. But if you're not directly con connected to me per se, I can't tell you what somebody else said about you because I don't know why, from what realm of understanding they were coming from in speaking to you about that. And I don't want to mislead you away from whatever they may have you know, meant by what they were telling you. So to me, it's not, it's not ethical for me to come and you know, correct what somebody else told you about unless it's directly against uh, the foundation of scripture, uh, then we can have another discussion about that. But if, if it was just something that was coming from their spirit, they alone can really share with you the implications of what they were talking to you about. So if you need further clarity, you just go to them and ask them. Um, I'm having you know, some questions concerning what you said. Uh, can you explain to me further what this means? Um, so things like that. 
and I don't, I don't, I don't presume to be one that can answer all questions that you bring to me because some questions are not for me. Some questions are for the, you know, for other people. Maybe, like for example, the person that is telling you that that question is really for him to really, you know, explain to you what that is because whatever he told you was coming from his spirit and. Um, you will need to go to him and so that he can dig further within his spirit and give you more information about those things so, so you can be clear on the matter. Because I can't come and explain to you concerning what somebody else was sensing in their spirit about, about you. And I, I wouldn't know what, what, it, what it was coming from, where it was coming from. Or paraventure, I'm not saying he was lying, but paraventure, he might, might have been saying something <laughs> out of just, you know, zeal or whatever the case may be. So I can't. I can't speak to that. Hallelujah. Amen. From Janice. Shalom, Prophet. My question is in reference to a short interview posted with Pastor Obetia Channel. Okay. He explained how this is the year of the cosmic takeover. Okay. How this is the start of the process of the universal takeover from the heavens now to the earth and to the, un and the underworld. Yes. He explained how the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of Christ how is the beginning of Christ's takeover of the earth, the underworld, and etc. Amen. Church. Amen. And to me, it seems clear now, nowadays, with the signs and wonders we see, more of than more than ever in the mainstream, such as deliverance, prophecies, and healings, mm -hmm. that um, we can really see the message of Christ's fullness is being presented now. So, mm -hmm. my question is, what does this mean? Um, does this mean the start of, of the start of the clock of Jesus' coming, and will we see it in our lifetime? And what, what is your estimate of how long until he comes? Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> You're putting me on um, <laughs> in a tight spot. Um, I would say whatever my father said is real and is true. And, um, and I, I feel the same. And I believe, you know, the word of God from his mouth. And I'm watching just as, you know, he's watching. Um, I'll just say, just keep, keep your watch um, um, concerning everything that you've heard from him. Just keep your watch. Um, I, there is what I see in the coming years, but I share those things with, you know, I, I, <laughs> with, with a certain group. I don't, I don't speak of certain things publicly. It's just my style. Yeah. Amen. But everything he said, 100%. And, and that's the voice of God to my ear. So, <laughs> so I, I, I took that in. Um, whenever he said that, I took that in and went before the Lord. And he showed me further things and, you know, just shared more things with me. And those things I share with, uh, with certain people at certain times. So usually before the year ends or in the beginning of the year, I would, I would have a program where I talk about certain things that the Lord has shown me. Um, and if you're interested, you can be a part of that when it, this year is coming up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. From Janine, Papa, is it possible that someone can receive Jesus on their sick or dying bed without confessing with their mouth before other people? <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot according to Matthew 10, verse 32. Mm -hmm. I don't think this can happen yet. At the same time, I know God is the, is the God of the impossible. Listen, if you know how crazy God is about people, you will know that even your nodding yes. is speaking. Yes, yes. Language is not just words. Hey. Understand it. Language is not just words. When we say language, we, we're, not, we're not dealing with just speaking from your mouth. Mm. So this is a language. You see, if I say this, you already know I'm saying bye. In, in another country, you may say hi. So, but it's, language is Sign, yes, yeah, sign language. So, what would you say about somebody that is deaf and dumb? Right. Can they not receive Christ because they are deaf and dumb? So, right. um, those things we just have to understand within context what language means. I hope that answers your question. Hallelujah. From Linda, Papa, thank you for another opportunity. How does one exactly know what office they are called into, and what if they display multiple different gifts? and offices, such as the prophetic, evangelist, and teacher. By your hands. That's how you know. <laughs> By your hands. So get um, Purpose Master Class 1, Purpose Master Class 2, Financial Mystics 1. Hallelujah. 
So from Nicholas, so Prophet, how, how do you know when you need activation in your ear if you have a constant high pitch ear ringing? Or do you, do you need to do an exercise that will... There are prophetic directions to do to activate your ear, your hearing. So that's why I referred you to Holy Ghost Academy. Those are the things I teach at Holy Ghost Academy. Sorry to all those who are asking about their dreams. I'm sorry. I, I really stay away from that. If you have noticed, I don't really try to go into that unless, you know, I'm in a private setting with you because it's actually an error to interpret people's dreams publicly because dreams are secrets. That's another thing I talk about. So that's why I shy away from that. I used to do it um, because um, a lot of people were in my... Um, in my inbox and DMs and wanting to interpret me to interpret their dreams and I would do it. But, you know, when you come into a certain understanding, it's not, it's not right to interpret people's dreams yeah. in the public. So I do it in a close setting. And that's why you only get that during our intimacy summer retreat conferences where we actually interpret people's dreams. And I help people to interpret their dreams, help people to interpret other people's dreams and things like that. I don't like to... I don't interpret dreams publicly. I, I shy away from that. Amen. Or during counseling sessions, that's when I can actually talk about dreams. Amen. Amen. This question is from Dr. Sean. Uh-huh. I'm going to rephrase the question. Okay. Um, is going to pray at graves considered necromancy? At graves considered necromancy? <laughs> I don't know. What, what class did I teach on necromancy? One second. I don't know if it was prophetic school two. I dealt with necromancy. I'm gonna say a few things that may shake some people up, just <laughs> just a little bit. Um For you to understand necromancy as a whole, um, you will need to get prophetic school. Let me just figure out which one it was. Um, but you say going to pray at the graves. <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. All right, let's come back to that question. Let's read, read the next question for me. Sometimes I get this feeling and I know that someone has that I know that someone has been drinking and I don't drink. Um it's it's um it's a prophetic sense that has been granted you. So um if you've noticed that pattern, then begin to use that in the prophetic. Because um, it was necessary that the things that happened um, during their time to be written for our learning. The Bible says those things that were written at four time were written for our learning. So how would you um, learn from them if they, were not, if they were not written? Because you were evidently not there when those things were happening. That's Romans chapter 15, verse 4, I believe. Can you, can you go to the scripture? Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Uh-huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we through patience, we through patience and comfort, and comfort of the of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. That's why. Amen. Amen. So we need comfort 
so the scriptures were written. Everything you saw, Adam, um, Moses, Abraham going through, gives you hope concerning your own faith and your own work and journey with God. What you see Paul going through, you see Peter w went through, all of those things give you hope concerning your own faith in God and your work with God. So those things that were written aforetime, the Bible says were written for our learning. Amen. From Esther, I wanted to know what is the significance of the full moon? There's quite a lot to say about that. And um, um, very soon I'll be teaching on the mystics of the moon um, and going deep into that subject but not today. Um, so there's a lot to say, and I can't just say that in one question. Amen. From Esther, how do we overcome fear before angelic encounters? Um, watch the teachings on... Um, um, oh, there are so many teachings on... on on our uh, channel here that you need to engage with, all the teachings on the angelic you need to engage with. It will help you, uh, give you um, an assurance concerning the, the connection between men and angels because we have actually made it seem as if it's a strange thing that happens when we see an angel, yet it is the most common thing that you should know about yeah. as a believer. And I've talked um, on the angelic quite a number of times on this channel. So just go through the teachings on the angelic. It will improve your faith and confidence in their manifestations around you. Amen. Amen. From Pharaoh, would the prophetic be considered a form of mysticism? The prophetic, would it be considered a form of mysticism? Absolutely, it is. Um, so let's go back to the question on necromancy. Please, for the person asking concerning necromancy, that was Mystics Conference 2, and the title is Spirit of Just Men. Um, so get Mystics Conference 2, and you will get all you need to know concerning necromancy. Um, but praying at graves, um, there is a lot to say. There's a lot to say about that, and you must know what you're going to do there if you're going to pray at a grave, um, and it must also be coming from a certain um, spiritual wor work, um, and I don't recommend that you go into such a thing without speaking to somebody who is well-versed in matters of the Spirit. Um, and, on, and receiving guidance from them as to how to go about doing that. If there's a spiritual work you need to go and do and carry out at a person's grave, um, I don't recommend you just going on your own and doing that. Um, just because there are sensitive issues and sensitive matters regarding grave and graveyards that you should be aware of, um, and you have to be at... You have to have a certain spiritual fortification and fortitude to be in that kind of environment because there's a lot of darkness that is in operation at the graves. Um, one, I had somebody come to me and spoke to me concerning um, an instruction that they received about going to the grave of a certain known fellow uh, who's a rich guy and what to go and do there. And I think um, they thought that I would have something against it, but I, I had to give them direction on what to do uh, based on um, the instruction they got from the Lord. So you just have to have somebody that is spiritually versed and understands uh, the workings, <coughs> excuse me, the workings of the spirit and how to go about doing those things. Um, necromancy, um, I've, I've dealt with this subject during the conference, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Speaking Amen. to the dead is nothing to be afraid of. Amen. Glory. And I don't want to make that statement just open-ended. That's why I'm telling you, go, to, go get the teaching. Because the teaching will protect you and will give you a certain perspective that will keep you guided. All right.
Don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> From Leroy. Yes. Psalm 150. Uh -huh. It says, praise him in his mighty firmament. Uh -huh. What is his mighty firmament? His mighty what? Firmament. Psalms what? Psalm 150. Can you put that scripture up, please? Psalms 150, can you say it again so they can get it? Yes, from Psalm 150, verse, verse 1. Verse 1, okay. All right. Psalms one fifty. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him. In the firmament of his power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Praise Lord. Lord. The word there is the word um, rakia. So David is speaking concerning praising the Lord, and it's just when he says, in the firmament of his power. It's just referring to the word firmament. There is the word expanse, mm. the greatness of his power, the, the vastness wow. of his ability. So you're praising him um, because of the vastness of his ability, the firmament of his power. So the word firmament can be used as also an expanse, just like we have the firmament that is above us. It's also an expanse, you know, it's just how great and how wide his power is. So that's basically the scripture. Hallelujah. It also goes on to say, praise him according to his excellent greatness. What does that mean? According to his excellent greatness. You have to know what his excellent greatness is. So, <laughs> so sometimes you, it's just basically, this is where the, the, the subject matter of precise worship comes into play, yes. you know, and uh, precise, when, when you say I'm praising God, you know, what what is adequate? Yes. What how adequate do you praise God? So, um, that's all he's referring to. If you read it in, um, can you read it in the message, yes, message sir. translation, and or in the amplified, whichever one you can get to. So this is going to be message. Okay. Hallelujah! Praise God in His holy house of worship. Uh huh. Praise Him under the open skies. Mm -hmm. Praise Him for His acts of power. Mm -hmm. Praise Him. For his magnificent greatness. Mm -hmm. Praise praise with a blast on the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Praise by strumming soft strings. So you see, um, in the message, it's giving you more in-depth, you know, so to speak, open-minded yeah. uh, way to, to go about that scripture. But in King James, when you look at it, you think that it's just saying, uh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to King James. I want you to juxtapose King James and message and see there's no difference. It's just necessary. When you read the Bible, understand that the Bible can actually be broken down in different contextual um, um, uh, sense. So depending on what the Spirit is trying to minister to you in that, point, in that day or in that moment, um, that's the revelation you get. Yes. So um, we can, when we are reading the Bible, I'm not trying to get a private interpretation that, oh, this is what it is and nothing else, you know, because it can actually mean something else on another time. That's why sometimes when you go through the scriptures, you come back again, you see something else, you come back again later on, you see something else, you come back again another time, you see something, it's the same scripture, yes. but it's ministering to you in different ways because there's so much in the word of God to be unlocked. So read King James for me again. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Uh -huh. Praise him in the firmament of his power. But you see, when you read messages, it's under the skies, under yes. the open skies. Yes, yes, but yes. in King James, he's making it sound like he's saying, praise God in the expanse of his power, yes. in the firmament of his power. 
You see, all of that is still making sense because that's what you should do. Right. And then the, the next verse. Pra praise him for his mighty acts. For his mighty acts, uh-huh. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. So that means there's a way to praise him. And it has to be according to his excellent greatness. Whatsoever, what's, at whatsoever time where you are choosing to praise God, it must be according to his excellent greatness. Yeah. So you can praise God not according to his excellent greatness. But then when you read in the message, it's saying something else. Yeah. Can you read the message? Not that it's saying something else, it's putting it in another way. Right. Let me put it that way. Uh huh. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Uh huh. Praise him under the open skies. Mm -hmm. Praise him for his acts of power. Uh huh. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. So he's telling you to praise God for what he does. His magnificent greatness or how great he is. So same thing. It's just been put in different structures according to the translator. So that's all there is to it. Please, I'm saying this all the time. There are things I don't teach out here, and that's why I'm referring you back to conferences. And this is what I said at the beginning. The questions I can ask, I'll refer you back to teachings, or answer, I'll refer you back to teachings, um, or some other teaching I've done here on live stream, or certain conferences that I've done. So that question is patent, patented to Mystics Conference, and you'll be able to learn how to do that. Yes. Thank you for this opportunity to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know the spiritual meaning of snails as it relates to the cosmic pearls of life. <laughs> spiritual meaning of snails. There are many spiritual things that has to do with snails. So um, as it relates to the cosmic pearls of life, I think it's because you saw the, sh the, the, the shell-looking thing. It's because... Um, Pearls come from that shell. That's that's why you had the <laughs> the shell looking thing on the <laughs> I think it's referring to the the graphic we have on our thing. Right. Yeah. 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 Pearls come from a shell, so that's 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 why it's there. Amen. Not necessarily snails. <laughs> so from Aaron, if prayer hasn't solved certain problems, how do you engage with God to get a remedy to the solution of your issue? Um, you have to understand what that issue is, number one, and um, seek knowledge concerning uh, that issue. And I think I was teaching about this just a few Sundays ago, um, understanding the cause of a problem. Was it Sunday or I think yeah, a few Sundays ago, the roots of a problem and how to engage with them. Uh, I think I started teaching also that um, at Miracle Hour. And we're going to go into the depth of understanding where problems can come from. They are, they are, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against uh, the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, this Paul was referring to because he saw a problem within the church and they didn't understand what kind of problems and battles they were facing. Yes. So he needed to let them know that there are problems that are of flesh, there are problems that are of your bloodline. There are problems that are of principalities. There are problems that are of powers, rulers of the darkness, uh, problems of spiritual wickedness in high places. And so knowing this, you must understand how to address them. And I've started, um, I started by sharing this at Miracle Hour this past Saturday. And over the coming weeks um, on Saturdays, I'll be breaking down problems of the flesh, how to deal with them. So you know how to pray concerning problems of the flesh. So I will, I will deal with all those things um, coming up soon. Amen. Also from Aaron, how did God harden Pharaoh's heart and doesn't this mess with our will? Say that again. How, how did God harden Pharaoh's heart and, doesn't, and, he, and he doesn't mess with our will? How did God harden Pharaoh's heart and he doesn't mess with our will? Um, there's a lot to say concerning that. Um, I will need to take time and really 
show you other things in the scriptures um, because it's the same Bible that says that um, according to the believer, that it's God that, um, how can I put it? God walketh in you both to do and to will according to his good pleasure. Now, when it comes to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh was already um, given to a certain cause and a certain way. So God did not make him decide in that sense to go against what he commanded Moses to speak to him. It was just that God was actually prolonging. Are you still here? Yes, we are. God was prolonging the decision yes. to let the people go because he wanted to punish Egypt for what they did to the children of Israel. That's what the Bible says. So that was the, um, the payment for the sufferings of the children of Israel. And so God kept his heart. God didn't allow. Um, he couldn't have even decided because his heart was already yeah. wanting to keep them there no matter what. All God was doing is that um, God didn't bring up a sign that would have convinced him. Yes. But the last one <laughs> convinced him. I see. Wow. Thank so, but there's more to talk about that on that subject. You know, I just, we can't go into that matter right now. Um, it's a whole teaching to look at. However, um, God does not interfere with your will if you are not already lost in after a certain way. Hallelujah. Even Satan. Satan, Satan can only trouble you or tempt you based on your lust, your desire, your will. So everything you have to allow it for it to happen. Amen. From Maryland, how does one overcome a bondage of lukewarmness? Um, first of all, um, you said Maryland? Maryland. Maryland, okay. Yes, First of all, Maryland, you have to you have to be filled with the Spirit. All right. The Bible says that um, in the book of Ephesians, the chapter number five, Ephesians chapter five. Can we read from the verse eighteen? Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter five, verse eighteen, King yeah. James version. Be not drunk with wine, wherein it's excess, but be filled. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, uh -huh. but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves speaking in to psalms, yourself in psalms and uh, hymns uh -huh. and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, uh -huh. giving thanks always for all things unto God mm -hmm. and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord, of, mm -hmm. of the Lord God. Mm -hmm. Wives? No, end there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So... The first things first, you have to be um, somebody that is, um, you know what to do to be filled with the Spirit. Lukewarmness starts because we are not filled with the Spirit and we don't know what to do to be filled with the Spirit. Um, fi being filled with the Spirit is not a one-time thing. Um, and people think that being filled with the Spirit is just when you start speaking in tongues. No. Um, that is what aids you to become full of the Spirit. And so there are exercises, spiritual exercises you must constantly engage with for your spirit to stay afire. All right? So if you want to keep the fire, the fire of God on you and the fire of God in your spirit, there is what to do to engage your spirit to be afire. So those are the things that you begin to do. Speaking to yourself, learn to talk to yourself, speak God's word to yourself, learn to speak uh, words of power to yourself. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, have, have the word of God on your lips. You know, that's what renews the fire of your spirit. Singing renews the fire of your spirit. Making melody in your heart renews the fire of your spirit. Uh, uh, um, submitting yourself one to another. Submitting yourself to the word of God to teach us and things like that. It impacts the fire of your spirit. Um, and I would just recommend you also um, get Intimacy Summer Retreat to where I spoke about the fire of your spirit. <laughs> How Amen. to ignite that. So, yeah, those are the things you have to focus on, uh, Marilyn. Hallelujah. Okay, so Christine, Papa Glovis. Oh, this one I read already. So from the anointed mom. From the what? The anointed mom. Oh, that's the person you're yeah. referring to. Okay. I thought it was part of the question. No, sir. It's down there. Hey. I just lost it. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. All right, I have, we need three more questions and we're, we're good for today. Please understand that next time we will not be taking questions on, on live stream. You'd have to send it to the group for me to answer your questions. Not to the group, to the email rather. Send it to the email. Send your questions to the email. Info at prophetgloveisonline.org. Hallelujah. So the anointed mom asked, why do some people see demons in the spirit all the time but never angels? It's because of their consciousness. Amen. If you're conscious of demons all the time, that's what you see all the time. Hallelujah. From Brandy. Uh -huh. Today is 8 slash dash 8, August 8th. Is there something we should do on dates with repetitive numbers? Yes, absolutely. But I wouldn't say it today. <laughs> <laughs> what is your answer? So from... Okay, skip it. Skip it. Okay, so from Alpha. Prophet, it's been hard for me to get into a high level in the spirit. I get to a particular level and I can't pass it. Is there? Do you have any advice for me? Um, spiritual knowledge is very important. You have to understand how to exercise yourself in God, uh, how to activate yourself in the spirit. Um, the gifts that you have, you have to know how to grow them. Um, and you have to also be able to um, challenge yourself to do certain things that you are not, you're not used to doing. Um, if you're still, um, let's say, for example, um, you're used to fasting three days and, and, you know, seeing certain results, after a while, your spirit will start demanding more than three days, you know. So you have to know how to also push yourself in the things of the spirit to get yonder in the spirit. Hallelujah. So those things are actually very important. So how I used to fast when I was a babe in Christ, not the same thing. Um, how much time I spent... Um, with the word, it's not the same level I used to when I was a babe. So as, as, as you want to increase your fervency in the spirit and grow to different heights in the spirit, more will be demanded of you, and you just have to answer the call. That's it. Um, but then there are other things you should know on how to activate yourself, how to activate your spirit, how to groom yourself in the giftings of God that you have. Those things are things that I teach at um, Holy Ghost Academy and certain conferences. So just make sure you're a part of those things whenever they come up. Amen. This is from Nelson. Prophet, last time you instructed me to, to be in a church in my area, though I attend Supernatural Church and Papa Lo online. While I'm, I am still here, I can feel there is no power, prophecy, or revelation as you teach, Papa. So should I still be part of this church? Um, and this is the church where my mom and dad came from, so it's hard for, to leave them. Um, I think don't compare uh, the churches you're used to online to the church you're attending because you need a place where you can serve. Wow. Um, I think that um, if there was an opportunity for you to serve where you're, 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 you feel um, fed and empowered uh, with the online churches you're, you're paying attention to, um, that's also fine. But if you don't have a means to serve from that distance, then you need to find a local church where you can give your time to and that's very important hallelujah so this question is coming from Janine do the laws of the universe and legalities impact children um, it's it's actually it's that's a very important question yes. yes but you see children are being raised by parents and when you are at a certain stage um, legally in the spirit, the parent is in charge of the life and the, the issues that will surround that child's life from their, adoles from their, uh, um, their adolescent stage. Now, when they get to a stage of maturity, then it will now be incumbent on them to begin to walk those principles and those legalities out. Um, so there are moments where um, when my child was sick, I would pray for them. And then when, I, when they start growing and come to a certain level, I'll start teaching them how to minister to themselves, how to speak the word of God over themselves. So um, even for my own wife, there are things that I could, I could do for her spiritually, and there are things that she has to, because she's now 
mature and she's in her age of maturity, I can no longer be responsible for certain things. She has to learn things also yes. um, of the spirit and exercise them for herself. For herself. And, and that will also be um, the way that she's also improving her, herself, in, herself in her own spiritual journey and growth. So um, what the children... The Bible says the children are kept under tutors and parenting is tutoring in, in the things of the spirit. So the responsibility is on the parent Hallelujah. at a certain stage. Yes. Amen. This is from Bashan. Hello, Papa. In the Bible about how the heavens and earth will be burned by fire, according to 2 Peter 3.10, will the believers on earth not be affected by it because we will already be transformed into our glorified bodies? Absolutely. Um, and paraventure, maybe we're in the new earth at that time. Amen. But anyways, um, I think that's all the questions we can take for today. Um, all your other questions, please send them to the email, um, ask uh, at prophetglovisonline.org or info at prophetglovisonline.org. Um, you, can, you can send in your questions uh, to that email, and next time we'll have another opportunity for you know, questions and answers, and I'll be able to, you know, help with those questions. But I trust that you have received answers to your questions. I trust that this has been a blessing to you. Yes, sir. Has this been a blessing to you? Oh, too <laughs> yeah. much, too much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Take something you want to give to God, to honor God for this time. Uh, ask one, one more question as we go and take the offering today. This one. Okay, two. So, so, from Tado, Prophet, what software or app do we use for Greek and Hebrew translations of words? I've noticed that there's certain effectiveness it brings for study of scripture. Um, there are many of them out there. Just research on Google. Amen. Yeah, Google pull up a few for you and just get any one that you, you feel connected to or you feel makes sense to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Two so from questions. Beloved, mm -hmm. Prophet, how can you confirm the sermon is from self or from the Holy Spirit? Knowledge. Knowledge. You cannot be discerning anything without knowledge. Amen. There's no such thing as discerning of spirits without knowledge. You need to be knowledgeable. The spirit does not talk to you with an empty bank. <laughs> hey. You need knowledge. Even in prophecy, we can't prophesy without knowledge. Right. You can't be empty in your head and expect the spirit to talk to you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know what he's saying. From Walter. Papa, from these verses, before the coming of Jesus Christ was the blood of Abel used for pleading for their needs and sin. No. No, you're going, you're going to another angle. <laughs> the, the blood of Abel was never used to plead for any sins. So from Janine, what is the sig significance of the mentioning of Simon of Cyrene in Luke chapter 23, verse 6? What is the significance of mentioning of what? Simon of Cyrene in Luke chapter 23, verse 6. I think you're speaking concerning the, the guy who paid for Jesus. Simon of what? Cyrene? Can you read? Can you read what she's talking about? Luke chapter twenty, verse six. Thank you, Jesus. So this is. Um, I'll start from five. Okay. Or four, actually. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Uh -huh. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Uh -huh. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. That's six. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jer Jerusalem at that time. Uh -huh. And when Herod saw Jesus, 
he was exceedingly glad, uh -huh. for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because uh -huh. he had heard many things of him, uh -huh. and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Uh -huh. Then he questioned him with many words, okay. but he answered him nothing. And the chief priest and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, and the rulers of the people said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverted the people. And behold... Have you passed the scripture she gave? Oh, yes, I passed it. Okay, um, please uh, confirm the right scripture for us so we know what uh, Simon the Cyrene you're referring to. That's what I believe. Oh, actually... Make sure you find that and send the question to the email, please. Uh, we are out of time, but we'll be back again. Um, and the Lord will give us another opportunity to come back again and, and share more light from the scripture and open and expound on some of the questions that, you know, have, will be in your heart or have been on your heart. Um, I'm believing God that um, next, the study, I can start teaching on something else, but... If, if I'm not, so to speak, at that time, sure what to teach at that moment, I would come back with another question session. Yes, please. Okay, so they clarifying that Simon the Cyrene was the guy who carried the cross for Jesus. What was, and what was that question? <laughs> so what was the significance of the mention? Of the mention, yeah, of he was the guy who carried the cross for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So I guess um, the word of God wanted to, us to know who carried his cross. And, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> um, that's it. And I, if you cared to know, he was the black guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know if there was a significance to him being black either. <laughs> could be, could be. You never know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining. I pray a blessing over your seed, over your offering. May everything that comes from your hand be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Love you much. I'll see you next time. Shalom.